Hello and welcome to the Alchemist Inkwell. <laughs> this is your spiritual podcast for grounded people. I don't have a, a movie star voice. <laughs> I figured I'd launch in with that again since it made you so happy last time. <laughs> it does. It actually is very <laughs> grounding, which is nice. I hope it is for everybody is listening your... too. <laughs> this is your spiritual podcast for grounded people. <laughs> I hope you have your cup of tea, everybody. Um, and I hope you do because we are coming into fall, like, well, in the Northern autumn. Hemisphere, in the Northern yeah. Hemisphere, we are coming into autumn in the Southern, you're coming into spring. I hope things feel spring. amazing for you. I hope that you are like emerging and reviving and enjoying the, the closing out of the cold as we prepare. <laughs> 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 bye bye movie star calming voice oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want, I don't want oh, to do the cold again no no it's interesting um up here we are a ski town right so everyone's favorite topic is oh do you think it's gonna be a big winner um it's, it's to the point where i've had people in my life be like i refuse to talk about the weather because i'm not speculating on snow like I'm not doing it. <laughs> so it's just, not it is what it is. There are so many different like superstitions and things. However, I listen to the bees, which is a no surprise to anyone listening to this podcast. Um, but I listen to the bees. That's where I get my stuff from. So beekeepers, bees usually store honey in the top parts of their little enclosures and then they mm-hmm. live in the bottom part. So then they crawl up and they grab the honey and then they come back down to like feed it to the babies, et cetera. Right. Mm-hmm. That's how bees typically operate. This year, as with last year, the bees have built, have put all of the honey in their living space. So, um, and they're not in the top of the bee enclosures at all, just like in, in the living space area, which means that they're afraid that even the trek up to the honey would freeze them, which is usually a huge sign that it's going to be a big winner. And mm-hmm. I... Like Wes and I heard that and both of us looked at each other and like, all right, let's winterize the house. Let's get the snowblower in. Let's do all these things now in September to get ready for the cold. So I'm, uh, I'm not thrilled. No, <laughs> it's, not, it's not the best. I'm just glad that I finally live in a place that doesn't do winter as, as intense as where I used to live. Um, cause Dan is going to take extra care of me this winter. I already have a coat that self heats itself, which you've witnessed. And sometimes Mm -hmm. it still doesn't do the trick. Uh, Mm We recently learned that my body skips the whole I'm cold phase and goes straight to frostbite. So (laughs) I'm going to be taking even more care this year, but I don't have to do so much of it because I live more South and that feels really appropriate and nice. And like last year we take walks on Saturdays and normally I have to bundle up with the wooliest of uh, mittens and, everything i look like something out of a uh, um peanuts cartoon but <laughs> last year i was like oh i barely even feel the cold because it's like a humid kind of winter so mm. i will take it and it just goes okay. to show like first of all here's my my hot take for the day weather people are divinators or diviners mm-hmm. and my phone agrees so that's fair it's, I, I say my my husband is a meteorologist. So he'll be like, it's going to be a big winter. And I'm like, oh, you're predicting the future, are you? <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, you are though. And I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> That's so interesting. So in The Way of Kings, the book that I'm reading yeah. from Brandon Sanderson, there's something called the high storms. And the high storms mm-hmm. come when the high storms determine they're going to come. And they come yeah. just as whatever. They're kind of sentient. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are people who predict the high storms. They're basically like the weathermen. And they are basically kind of regarded as kind of like heretics or a little bit outside of like the religion tradition because you're not supposed to do prophecy, Mm -hmm. but they really need people to predict the high storm. So it's kind of like, well, you're not supposed to do this, but we really need you anyway. So you need to do it. (laughs) And that's exactly, I think, the energy that it's bringing in, which is just kind of funny. Sounds about right for the rest of us. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. You don't need to predict it, but we kind of like that you do. <laughs> yeah. It's can, can we know anyway? We're just not going to talk about the fact that we asked you. Right. That was like my whole childhood growing up as a healer in a church. Mm, yeah. Nobody talked about it. It's on Sunday, but during the week it was like, can you help me? Can I call you? And yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, this week we enter into Libra season, which is an amazing season. Mm. I love Libra season. 
Yeah. It's so weird to me that it would be anything other than fall. Like for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere and Libra being spring, that's wild to me because it's such a fall feeling. Mm-hmm. Well, and, you <laughs> know, that's subject. that's a huge conversation in astrology too, right? Because, you know, all of astrology bases the temperance or the temperaments off of um, the seasons, the yeah. zodiac and the seasonal changes and all those things. And it presumes a Northern Hemisphere. And so I actually, one of my mentors, Kelly Surtees, lived in um, Australia for a while, Southern mm-hmm. Hemisphere. And so I had the honor of actually having breakfast with her in January. And I was like, hey, how do you justify this? And mm-hmm. she said, you want to go more by qualities. And so th- I th- one of her theories is that the qualities of the signs perhaps came first. And they said, oh, that reminds us a lot of autumn. And then the qu- oh. so so maybe you can use it with that correlation and say the quality of the sign, not necessarily having to associate just like the Mm -hmm. 11th house does not have to or the first house doesn't have to be the same as Aries and in fact Mm -hmm. that's uh it's for some astrologers quite a faux pas um Mm. to to they call it the 12 letter alphabet when you associate the sign in the house that it quote unquote rules because technically no one ever said the signs rule a house it's very individual to your natal chart um Mm. but that's that's a whole debate for astrologers and astrology do not, you know, get yourself caught up in it. It's not something to stress about. Um, it's a great learning tool. And then you can differentiate later by kind of making it parts of a sentence or whatever. Um, but it's, it's sort of like that Aries doesn't have to be first housey, but they share some qualities. So interesting. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, that makes a lot of sense. It's just really interesting. And it is, it's, it's Northern hemisphere focus because that's where, where it was created. In the north, yeah, it was it was where it was <clears throat> first understood. Yeah, not created, I guess. Well, I I know that um in New Zealand there were some cultures that had some amazing things going oh, yeah. on, and probably were the first. So I want to make sure that because I'm aware of that exists, even though I'm not educated in it, I acknowledge it. Oh yeah, I mean, there. What I will say too is, you know, there's in Cambodia they have zodiac mm-hmm. and astrology, and you know, in yeah. other places as well. I meant mostly yeah. the the system that we use is modern day. Yeah, for the most yeah, part, our astrologers. current Western astrology tropical yeah. system. Yeah, exactly. So that also means yeah. that we're at the equinox, which is amazing. And mm-hmm. honestly, with the equinox, um, we're lucky because we get to actually be together for this one, which is going to mm-hmm. be super fun. Um, so our next episode, you guys get to see us together <clears throat> here in my backdrop. We'll be together like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to do a really cool episode next time that our patrons voted for, um, basically talking about folk magic, folk magic in the modern age. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to be really cool. But Krista is reading a book that they really want to cite for this adventure. So we're going to wait till Krista <laughs> is done with that book, um, which will be the next time that we are together anyway. Yep. Um, and we're going to celebrate the Equinox with some of our clients because we're out here for our writing retreat for the Forgotten Storytellers. Um, speaking of that, if you would like to join the Forgotten Storytellers, yes. we do have our next cohort open. How do I keep forgetting um, if- that we're <clears throat> taking new people for the cohort and then I get super excited all over again. It's like we get to meet new people and, and <laughs> right? new books. Yay. I know. I'm so excited about it too. It starts November, first week of November this time. So you have mm-hmm. a little bit of time right now, but um, if you have an idea for a book that you would like to write and you want to do it in alignment with your higher self and your astrology and all of the magic that there is in you and craft a book that actually can heal people being a fun fiction story. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, yeah. that is what we do. Please pitch us. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're starting it in November, which is beneficial because um, <clears throat> we don't want to start one during eclipse season. So <laughs> we pushed it off a no. little extra, which gives yeah. us more time to find people. But that being said, um, if now feels like the time, send in your pitch, get excited about it, be excited about yep. it, send it into us. Cause it's going to, you know, once it fills up, we do try to cap it to make sure that the groups are small enough that everybody gets individual attention. Um, yep. So if it fills up quickly, it fills up quickly and you know, it's what Mm -hmm. is meant to be. Um, but if you feel like this is, this is your chance to go for it, we are so excited to be able to hear from you. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. It's so incredibly cool. It's just genuinely so incredibly cool. And we're Mm -hmm. so lucky that we get to run this. It's such a unique and beautiful program. And we've met so many incredible people and have read so many incredible books and Uh, heard so many incredible ideas, all of these different things. Mm -hmm. And also 
shout out to Eleanor, the 12 year old who is writing a story that wanted to join yeah. the Forgotten Storytellers and asked us if we take 12 year olds. And unfortunately, we couldn't accept Eleanor into the current cohort, but we know you. We are impressed by you and we want you to know we say hi and we think about yes you. keep your tenacity mm-hmm. that's fantastic that's gonna get your <laughs> books out there <laughs> mm-hmm. for yeah. sure uh totally support that so anyway yeah please pitch the forgotten storytellers however let's talk a little bit about what flavors this equinox is bringing forward yeah. um astrologically yeah. and energetically and also things that you know we recommend you do to kind of honor this equinox this mm-hmm. changing into introspective time basically yeah. Yeah. So it's funny mm-hmm. in, in some folk magic practices before um, it was a, an American holiday to make Thanksgiving in November, this was a time of Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. So it mm-hmm. was the the time of peak harvest or coming into harvest. So mm-hmm. you were acknowledging and receiving a ton of abundance. It's also yeah. the time where the sun starts uh, having less daylight in the day. Mm-hmm. So this is our equinox, right? Equal daytime and nighttime. And now we're going to have shorter days. So you get this sort of um, calling in of your own energy, returning on the investments of what you've put out, the reciprocity. Mm-hmm. And so that gratitude of everything I've done now coming back to me. And of course, you know, Libra itself is ruled by Venus. So there is sort of this gratitude, love, abundance, sharing kind of energy to it. Um, mm-hmm. The chart itself it's interesting from a mundane standpoint, and I will be doing an astrology video on that on my YouTube to go into the nitty gritty mundane astrology for it. But in this case, Libra ruling the sun is in the um, the sign of Leo still. So they have that mutual reception, which mm. is very interesting. Uh, Venus mm-hmm. is very strong in this chart in a lot of ways. All roads sort of kind of re- reconnect with Venus one way or another. Uh, mm-hmm. She is ruling Jupiter. She is ruling Mars. She is in mutual reception with the sun and ruling the sun. Uh, if you get into exaltation rulership, she has, uh, she is also talking to Saturn, which is really interesting. So it's just like a lot of Venus kind of getting the final say and she's in Leo. Nice. So nice. Venus representing, of course, beauty, art, mm-hmm. uh, the feminine, all of those things. We're kind of hoping that this, kind of gives recognition to those who have not who have been asking for it i have personal hopes of this um and that maybe this empowers people to ask for or perhaps say i deserve this recognition i will also say <clears throat> with this energy and we've seen this a lot in the last couple of weeks but this feminine energy rising sort of divine reckoning for a lot of people in the public eye. Like it is not a killer time to be a celebrity with shitty behavior. Um, (laughs) (laughs) You are not going to keep getting away with it. Um, And it's really interesting because I think it's very like the second Venus goes out of retrograde, all of these very divine feminine energies rising to get call people out on Mm -hmm. behaviors and things like that. Um, justifiably call people out on behaviors and things like that, both on the sides of, hey, there's people fighting for living wages, maybe respect that, which is, again, a very divine feminine thing in a lot of ways to be Mm -hmm. like rising up in a group together to peacefully protest things. That's very a divine feminine form of social justice versus the divine masculine form. Not trying to genderize it in a way of like I'm a woman, you're a man. Not that. It's we both mm-hmm. we all have these energies inside of us. They are two different types of energy specifics, mm-hmm. not like a gender in the way we expect it to be. Um it's the so softer everyone approach as compared to the yeah. harder approach. Yeah. Exactly. So everyone has divine feminine and divine masculine energy. It's just everyone balances it differently. And that goes for the world as well. And so divine feminine energy is rising in a really significant way. And I think that's perfectly in time with us stepping into Libra season as well. And all the amount of stuff that Venus is bringing up, Mm -hmm. Venus is going to point out. And I think it's going to be a really interesting. I'm excited for this Libra season, to be totally honest. I love it. I always love Libra season, but I really just, I feel like it's going to be very interesting energy an interesting Mm -hmm. thing that's going on um culturally and societally and yeah very intriguing yeah yeah Yeah. there's definitely a lot to pull out of it and again like you look at the chart and we still have so many things that are building and i think Mm -hmm. that's been a major thing about this year we're still coming out of a lot of action that happened Mm -hmm. three years ago 
And mm-hmm. so now we're finally separated enough from that in transit and in culture, by the way, same Z's. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> But we're finally separate enough from that to be able to do something different, to be able to change our focus, to be able to start something new, because that mess is managed, if not Mm -hmm. cleaned up. Um, But now we get to move on to other focuses of interest. And Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us are trying to figure out what that is. And now like our priorities are shifting and Mm -hmm. we have to take those into account. We have to address things that are now needing our attention. Um, So we're, we're in a sort of rising culture as it is. Um, as Venus, of course, is now rising with, as a morning star. I mean, she's risen. She's out of the rays of the sun astrologically, but she continues to rise as she um, mm-hmm. separates. So it'll just be interesting to see how that sort of comes to fruition over the next like month, mm-hmm. like, you know, from now yeah. there. <clears throat> yeah. Definitely. Um, don't worry. Is... I'm studying it. <laughs> I'm t- so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. What I'll also say with that. So I mean, we've talked about equinoxes on here a whole bunch mm-hmm. before. So I'm just going to read a reminder of the generalized things to pay attention to mm-hmm. for equinox and solstice. So pay attention to your dream space. Dreams are very interesting right now. I actually have been having, well, maybe I'll touch on that in a second. It's a very interesting dream s- stuff that's going on. Um, and I'm not 100% sure what the deal with it is yet. So mm-hmm. we're working on it um, because it's very intriguing. But Beside the point, pay attention to your dream space, especially pulling any sort of messages or ahas or even just things that, like I just said, are kind of funky in your dreams. You're like, that feels something mm-hmm. that there's something there. It's not so much a norm air quotes, normal dream where you wake up and you're like, well, that was just weird. Okay. And you move on. It's more of like a, huh, this is stuck with me. Or I had this very interesting feeling waking up today. If you don't remember your dreams, that's okay too. Like, but if you just have those like different things that kind of shift during the dream space, it's just a really important time to pay attention to it, especially on the night of the equinox Mm -hmm. as we truly shift over there. Um, the changing of the seasons basically just matters. I just want to put it that way. And like, you're affected by it. Um, it's a big deal. So that also creates a lot of space for your guides to communicate with you with the spirits and energy around you to communicate with you. Um, also this particular season of harvesting has always been in every tradition, the he, this, the season of harvest mm-hmm. is so important and impactful culturally and mm-hmm. energetically and magic wise, um, to be like, look what celebrate all this stuff we pulled in all year that I always recommend you do that too. Mm-hmm. celebrate all this stuff that you have called in since basically spring or since fall for those of you in the Southern hemisphere, like what have you cultivated? Whether it's, if you're in the Southern hemisphere, it's gonna be more internal work stuff. If you're in the Northern hemisphere, it's gonna be more external work stuff. Um, Just based on the energy that always comes up during these times, it's like, what has gone on? For me, I'm gonna be reconciling a whole lot of pieces of stuff. There's been a lot of stuff that has gone on since spring, like more than I could even possibly imagine has all happened all at once. And that is amazing, but it also like deserves some notice. And so to like, Mm. actually like write it down or do a journal session or do a card pull, or even just sit there and like go through your memory since this time. And even if it was really hard for you, which it was for a lot, a lot of people, or you're like, I didn't do anything. Nothing has shifted. Yeah. There has been things that have shifted, look through it and actually sit with it and see the things that have shifted. And that also helps you to feel like, okay, what would I like to do going forward? And that's what equinoxes and solstice hold space for us to do as well. There are moments of pause, truly, where you can sit there and be like, what do I want to do with this energy? How do I want it to move forward? So Mm -hmm. I always recommend doing those things as well. And brief coaching insight. Um, If Mm -hmm. you feel like nothing has shifted, ask yourself what's uncomfortable about where you are. And what Mm -hmm. you would like to have shifted Mm -hmm. and then ask yourself what's in your control to move that forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Because that will give you more power in your situations and in your circumstances, even if it's small. And for now, even if, even if a lot of Mm -hmm. things are still out of your hands and I'm speaking with you right now, there's a lot in my life that has shifted and stuff that I'm just waiting to shift. And um, you know, it's, it's all about timing. One thing I've been learning um, as I'm, diving deeper into my healing experience and practice right now is healing comes to you. And as you mentioned in one of your manifesting episodes on TikTok recently, Em, mm-hmm. um, healing and manifesting comes to you when you are ready for it. And until you're ready for it, it helps you get ready. And mm-hmm. so that's another thing is, you know, how am I more ready for the thing that I want to receive than I was six months ago? Uh, you can at least track your progress in that way. It's Mm -hmm. also a really good time to start thinking about what you're taking into your body. New seasonal 
food is coming up and you want to make sure that along with this season, you're nurturing your body for the climate that you're in, uh, for the conditions mm -hmm. that you're in, you know, it's going to be a, a drier time. So maybe mm -hmm. some warmer food as compared to the colder food that we would have had over the summer when everything was hot and we were balancing those temperaments. Now mm -hmm. we're moving into a, a colder and drier time. This is a great time to start thinking about soup recipes or warm recipes and things like that and using the seasonal, uh, hopefully local <laughs> things that are available to you. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing I always say too is um, it's a um, it's just an important thing to like look to the season ahead and be like, okay, what is coming up for me? And mm -hmm. there's things that you concretely know, right? Do you have travel planned? Are you going to go to work this whole time? Like there's things that you yep. know are coming up for you that you can look at and be like, okay, wow, what's in this, you know, till the solstice, what's happening between now and then. And there's a lot of stuff. This is a very active time of year. There's, you know, whether it's Halloween or Samhain or whatever you celebrate there. And then if you do, Thanksgiving or harvest festivals or anything like that during that time as well. For me, it's the start of birthday Christmas season, which is, <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> we both have on, on our families, like birthday mm -hmm. and birthday and birthday and birthday and birthday from this point on. Yeah. yeah. Ours started, ours started two weeks ago. Um, yeah. So my mom today. Is... Happy birthday, Catherine. If you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> my mom's is on the 9th of October and then we have a little bit of a break and then it's just no break at all for the so from about like the third week of November to the second week of January mm -hmm. it's pretty much a birthday a week <laughs> that entire time <laughs> yeah I'm the only Gemini <laughs> <laughs> it's rough isn't it being like the uh -huh. only one in that time of the year yeah I am truly the only one in like in my blood family or my married family, that is mm -hmm. that time of the year of my chosen family, not the case, but, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but yeah, so, so there's that everything, everybody else is just Sagittarius and Capricorns. Everyone's just, that's it. That's all there is. Oh, the we're here like, air balancing air. The air the fire. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I get that. I'm surrounded by mutables and I'm the only, mm -hmm. um, fixed sign. Um, yeah. And so like, I, I look at everybody in my life and I'm just like, mutable, 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 mutable. <laughs> like I'm fixed. Dang it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So you, you find your fit though. Yeah. 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 That being said, my mom's a Libra. So that's nice. Mm. My sister's a Taurus, but, but she's fixed too. <laughs> I was going to say, but what, Em? <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Still okay. Uh. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's things you can look forward to. So it's really nice to like start looking at that energy and just deciding like, how do you want to feel when those things come up and deciding that now on the equinox, you get a little bit of an energetic boost to be like, Oh, I want to feel like this. I want to feel confident or I want to feel comfortable or I want to feel mm -hmm. secure. Um, and just start calling those things in. Like, this is a secure thing for me. I am comfortable here and thinking about it now and like almost pre-experiencing those things mm -hmm. can really make a shift on at the very least, your mentality and the energy you're bringing to anything, but also in the general energy that the universe is bringing to you because you're claiming it in advance. You're literally mm -hmm. being like, this is the energy this is bringing to me. Okay, thanks. Like, yep, we're doing this. And I'm not saying it's a 100% foolproof method because the universe does what the universe does. Um, things happened for you, not to you, but still, mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes they feel very to you, not for you. And I understand that. However, it just it really, really helps to at least mm -hmm. have that that pull and that draw. Yeah. You can place your order and then the universe can let you know if your order needs to be adjusted. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Absolutely correct. Um, so it's going to be really neat. I'm really excited for the energy that we have heading our way this week. Me too. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot coming in. Um, but again, there's just as much, there's a lot coming in globally. And I really mm -hmm. want to reemphasize this. Um, one of the biggest things that I've had going on in my life right now is having to refocus on my individual experience. Because mm -hmm. when I master more of that, I'm going to be just by extension, more helpful to those around me. Um, mm -hmm. And the world is so crazy right now. And it's so easy to get pulled into the emotions that we have about other people's actions that are completely out of our control, aside from voting, if you can vote to your vote. Um, vote. Yeah. Vote, vote, but vote. outside of that, you know, mm -hmm. stay in your realm of influence and let your worth and your value in things be... Um, drawn to you from those don't base your worth on things that you can't touch 
because mm-hmm. that's somebody else's problem, somebody else's job. And if they're not doing a good job of it, then somewhere along the line, it might come back to you and you can make your contribution there. Again, voting as a good example. Um, but your world, your life is just as magical as the world as a whole. And it does yeah. make a difference. There is that ripple effect. There is every mm-hmm. individual. I remember um, I was very unsatisfied with this, but it doesn't make it untrue. I had multiple um psychic mentors growing up who told me simply by existing you're making a shift in the energy of collective and I was like Mm -hmm. great what do I do though because I'm bored um (laughs) but simply by existing and if you focus on your stuff and you make your differences and you know you save that starfish um anything Mm -hmm. like that you are making a difference and then it reveals to you more that you can do if it's for you Mm -hmm. yeah I fully fully agree with that completely and it is true. I understand you being like, no, I don't want more than that. I am unsatisfied. I want to save it. the whole world all by myself. But here's the thing. You can save the world. Don't do it by yourself. That's that's no. that's yuck. That's like exhausting. Do it with friends. <laughs> I love how that is quite literally like your, your not yet developed signs, like all combining at the same know. time, you know, like you little kid version of you, like your little Scorpio moon, like by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I need to nurture you and provide resources to you all by myself right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and then the the Virgo being totally anxious about it. Yeah, that's right. all my angles for you, folks. And then your Taurus is like, I want everyone to have snacks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always that person. Like, you're not feeling well? Have you eaten? <laughs> <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> do you have the food you need because we got to make sure that their basics are met yeah that's the one you stick us out here on thursday the first thing we're doing is grocery shopping <laughs> it's true <laughs> that's so funny we're talking about like things we need to do to prepare and chris was like well we need food <laughs> right we need to do that so we're gonna do that first I'm so glad you accept that about me, though. Oh, I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get food for other people, too. I promise. But no, yeah, yeah it's, of course yeah. it is. <laughs> the funny thing is, is my sister is also Taurus, as I just mentioned. And yeah. um, I'm staying the night at her house tomorrow night <laughs> with my mom. And I was like, is there anything you want to bring? She's like, dinner. <laughs> I, <was> like, cool. <laughs> I want to blame, blame makes my, uh, sense. my wonderfully Italian grandmother, who, mm-hmm. as I was growing up, the you would walk into the house and all you'd hear was, eat yet (laughs) yes grandma do you want a tasty (laughs) cake do you want chocolate i have ice cream and you would have to go through all of her refrigerator and say no to it before you could actually sit down and have a conversation she was a scorpio son um i I have her chart in there somewhere i think she has got some interesting taurus as well she and i have amazing synastry which makes a ton of sense uh Mm -hmm. when you look at my lineage so oh my mom's very much like that. You don't have to say no to everything, though. She's just talking. What do you do? You want some snacks? We have bubble water. I'm like, yes, mom. I do want bubble water. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's fabulous. Oh. oh, anyway, it's also a wonderful time um, with the changing of vibes that comes in, especially as we enter into fall. Um, I know a lot of people really love this time of year. I know a lot of people as they get older, love this time of year. Mm -hmm. I also know that some people also get really sad that summer is going away and winter's coming in. So regardless of whether you're someone who's like spooky season, which I'm not into spooky season, but I love fall. Mm -hmm. Um, Or if you're someone who's like, no, bye summer. I love you. Um, I've been those, both of those people. And I think it's really important to get into whatever vibes of the season, whenever a season is changing, whatever vibes of the season you resonate with, get into that. Mm -hmm. I typically do it by curating a reading list for myself of the books that I'm going to read during that season because it really helps me feel aligned of like, yes, this is going to be like what I do, you know, (laughs) for this season. I read these books and it's going to be so awesome. Why are you giggling? (laughs) Because mine is baking competition shows. (laughs) And like you as a German baking like, competition show, which is so perfect. And I'm over here like food, food that I can watch other people make. <laughs> which like totally fair. I love yeah. baking competition shows. Yeah. They're so fun and they are so seasonally appropriate. Yeah. But I love you your know? idea of the reading list too. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, because like for fall, I'm like, ooh, like what kind of 
you know, I usually go for like witchy books. Like last mm-hmm. year I read The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. It was mm-hmm. perfect. You know, I read more kind of like aesthetic-y sort of comfort-y books that way. The Scorpio races I read every, pretty much every year at <laughs> the Scorpio race time. Um, or I'll, uh, this year I think I'm actually going to get her tarot deck. She has a Scorpio race tarot deck and I think I'm uh, just going to do that. Yeah. I think and she should. drew it herself. The author drew it herself. Mm-hmm. So yeah, really yeah. cool. So I think I'll, I'll probably do that. <laughs> That's awesome. You got to love most um, of talented people. Right. Right. Um, she's one of those authors too. She, I mean, I'm not going to say that she's just like this incredible person. Cause I don't really know very much about her as an author. I think she's faced criticism before, but what I will say that I think is really cool that she does, you know, how when authors go into a bookstore, they'll like sign a bunch of books and then be like, Hey, mm-hmm. I have a bunch of signed books that I posted over here. Um, she like goes through and will sign the book. Sure. But then she'll also like draw little pictures on a couple of the pages. Oh. So they're like each book that she's ever signed is super duper unique. If she goes into a bookstore and like signs it there, or she'll like draw like a whole thing on the front. Whoops, whack. She'll draw like a whole thing on the front <laughs> or something like that, um, which is just really cool to me that like mm-hmm. that level of personalization. So I just love that energy. It's Maggie mm-hmm. Steve Bader. That's her name. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I curate my book list. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to read just yet. There's this one book I'm looking forward to reading. That's um about, it's like a, um it takes place in like a fantasy version of modern day Cairo. So I'm excited to dive into that. You're going to have to let me know what the title of that one is. You can put it on a reading list for Egypt. I know. Well, that's how I wanted to read it. And yeah. there's a couple books I actually want on our reading list for Egypt because mm-hmm. that one's called What the River Knows. I've been looking forward for this to this book coming Me out too. for like months. I'm like, mm-hmm. please come out. I think it comes out in January, I think. So yeah. we'll read it before. But anyway, yeah. so there's that one. And then there's another one that's by the same author of the Secret, Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. Or I might just keep reading My Year of Sanderson because it really has been that for me. And I'll just yeah. keep going. I'm not sure yet. So I'm working on that this week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Figuring that out for the aesthetics of this season for me to feel grounded in the energy of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what I do. But whatever feels good to you. It could also be like, what projects are you going to do right now? Like, is there mm-hmm. art that you're looking forward to doing? Are you going to do reorganize a room or do some home improvement stuff? Or are you looking forward to wearing whatever. sweaters again? Do you want to go out I and buy sweaters. some new sweaters? <laughs> I want sweaters. Where are your fuzzy <laughs> socks? Pull them out socks yes oh now i need to go get my foot it's actually kind of warm here today so i'm not gonna go get my fuzzy yeah. socks <laughs> it's it felt like fall earlier this morning but right. now it's almost 80 again um yeah yeah, yeah it's 73 right yeah. now or if you're oh, like me warm. and you have two double-coated dogs who shed a ton you get mm-hmm. ugg boots because they're fuzzy socks but they don't get dog hair all over them which is nice, nice. Mm-hmm. there you go there you go Callum also sheds a ton, but my bunnies shed more, <laughs> which is so weird to me. I'm like, why are you guys, you don't have that much hair. You're like this big, like oh. what's your deal? <laughs> yeah. We took a second Jack out of Jack this week. Uh, Cause Aww. he just started blowing out and it was like, I had just washed my bedding cause the both dogs sleep with me. So my mm-hmm. comforter gets dog hair all over it very quickly. And I'm just like mm-hmm. trying to fall asleep and like a dog hair brushes my nose. So I have to wash my my bedding quite frequently. I just did it. And I was like relishing in the fact that I had no dog hair brushing my face at night and Jack starts blowing out. So I have tufts everywhere. Oh, well, fun he's fun. worth it. He's such a good boy. Well, of course. He's mm-hmm. a baby. He is. Awesome. Well, are there any other transits we need to be aware of for this week at all? Uh, let me double check. Do, 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 okay. Do, um... I don't, I wouldn't really say any of them are like personal or ones that we might really recognize. The sun is going to oppose Neptune halfway through Neptune's retrograde. So it's a really great time for meditation on Tuesday. But by the time you hear this, it'll be Wednesday. Go for it. Neptune's super slow. So it'll still be like Mm -hmm. enough. Uh, On Thursday, the day that this releases, we will have that trine with Pluto. So if you are looking to get something unstuck, as in like pull the roots out with the weeds kind of stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. that's a good day to really focus on that, to even go inward and ask, what does that look like? Because Pluto is still retrograde, but we'll be turning Mm -hmm. retrograde or turning direct next month. And this is sort of the beginning process of that. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself, like, if I feel stuck, what needs to really, what's the root of that cause that I can get really down there into and, um, pull it out. Yeah. I like that. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Very yeah. nice. And then uh, if you're doing any traveling or writing or planning or anything mercurial, Monday, the 25th is a good day for that. Thank goodness that's when I'm flying. <laughs> um, because Mercury will be trying Jupiter. Mercury is now direct trying Jupiter in Virgo, which is quite lovely. Yeah. Yeah. I will also say, um, if you're still feeling kind of scatterbrained, like last week was very brain foggy. This mm -hmm. week, it's kind of more scatterbrained, jumping around from bits to bits to bits to yeah. bits to bits. That's your um, <laughs> I was just going to say, it's just, it's that chaotic energy that's kind of sitting with this week. It's not chaotic and like, oh my God, everything's out of control. We're here at your grade style. It's more chaotic in thought. If you drop one project and start another one, if you're in the middle of an email and then you move tabs to something else out of nowhere and you're like, why am I doing this? That's what it is. So just to highlight and point that out too, of like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hang on to your brains. It'll be fine. <laughs> Hang on to your brains as the sun leaves Virgo. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah we often forget that Virgo is mutable. Um, so everything you described is so Virgoan because it's like, I'm doing my emails. I'm organized. I'm tasking, but I'm accidentally multitasking, which is really mm. fun. I think that's, um, that's the tagline of my life. Accidentally multitasking. <laughs> we need that yeah. on a t-shirt. <laughs> Put it on the list, Krista. <laughs> <laughs> if you do join the Forgotten Storytellers, we are imminently creating a ton of merch. So much merch. <laughs> Honestly, I'm probably just going to, once my creative energy sort of returns, which it's kind of been gone for a little while, but it's coming mm -hmm. back. I feel, I feel the, the vibes of it. I'm just going to sit down one day and just like draw out like 50 different merch designs. It'll be great. It'll be great. <laughs> so many. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you all so much for being here so much for listening. Um, we do have fun announcements coming up throughout this before the solstice yeah, like between several. the equinox and the soul. We have a bunch. <laughs> it's, it's not a small amount. It's no. a lot amount. It's, no. it's a big one. Yeah. Um, but we're really excited about it. Mm -hmm. Like the things that we are announcing are, are really cool and, and pretty pretty exciting and thrilling so just stay stay tuned for that of course if you do want to work with us at the forgotten storytellers this next cohort is going to be really fun i'm really excited about it mm. um just cool energy it's the first in. time we'll be able to do a cohort over a holiday season like usually mm -hmm. we finish them around that but because of eclipse season we prioritize a little bit get started before the holiday season and so we'll get to mm -hmm. spend the energy of the holiday season not pressuring you to write a book by any means no You'll actually have plenty no. of time, um, but we'll be able to have that time together as a group, which I'm really yeah. looking forward to. Yeah, it's really cool because the way that it kind of shook out, we designed it this way, is the first two months, you're not ever actively writing the book. You're planning mm -hmm. and you're learning and you're doing that. And we get to do that during November and December. So it's just like a cool energy to be planning and, and feeling that coziness. And then literally starting in January, then you dive in and start writing, fully mm -hmm. writing your first draft. Um, that's how we set it up, which is talk about using the energy of the new year to your benefit. Like yeah. I, I cannot imagine a better way to do that. Mm -hmm. There will um, be no new year's anxiety because you will have the plan already in place. You just have to write it out and feel good about it. Mm -hmm. And it will be, be easy. super neat. Oh, also oh, you will be developing your intuitive folk magic and astrology skills at the same time. Very oh, yeah. easily. <clears throat> yeah. It's really, really cool. So anyway, you should join us doing that. Or if you want to go on an adventure with us, you should come to Italy. Mm hmm Because we're going to go adventuring. Yeah, biggest um, birthday party I will ever have. <laughs> it is the birthday, biggest birthday party you will ever have. And it's already such a good group. Like the people yeah. that are already coming with us. It's just oh fantastic. Gosh, yeah. So so yeah. stoked on it um gonna be a blast but yeah so you, you should come with us there too mm -hmm. if you want to do that um yeah other than that we hope that you have a really fantastic equinox celebrate in whatever way feels aligned with you do whatever rituals feel good for you the, truly it is a personal thing with the equinox some a lot there's a lot of traditional stuff there that you can dive into or it's truly design it kind of a design it yourself sort of situation how would you mm -hmm. like to play with this energy and what do you want to do with this energy and for those of you who are coming to the retreat with us this weekend, we have stuff designed for you, but that's, <laughs> that's it. I'm so stoked. It's going to be great. Uh, all right. So we hope that you take all of this energy and this equinox and you go make, go some, make magic. some magic. <laughs> you guys will have to let us know. I have to know if I have to go on three or if I have to try to match up with you. Okay. I can do both. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was wonderful. Goodbye. <laughs>